It's also the most interesting skateboard in the world. Yep, this is true, and I'm sure most of you are aware of this. A really cool article interview feature with the one and only Alex Olsen, a real enigma in the whole skateboarding world. And it's just cool to see how he's evolved over the last few years. Um, he's kind of had a few um real turbulent moments that I think that he's kind of talking about in the interview as well. But it's kind of just cool to see the evolution of this guy and where he's kind of come from. Um, or where he's kind of uh, evolved to or from, whatever that sentence may be. Um, this is a real cool interview with um, Noah from uh, GQ, kind of, you know, is the resident is the well, resident skateboarder, I'd say, right, for the most part. And kind of uh, Alex Olsen kind of breaks down his kind of wellness routine and what he kind of does. And one thing that really came to mind that really kind of stuck out was his two-hour regimen that he does in the morning before he gets up or before he kind of starts his day meditating stretching all this really amazing cool stuff i'll quickly kind of go through the article now with you so this is um from gq it says radical wellness of pro skater alex olsen this is written by uh, noah johnson or gq style again i'll link in the show notes for you guys uh, listening so you can read it yourself it says here um alex olsen comes out of nowhere uh is it right here Elsa Collins comes out of nowhere. I'm waiting on a sidewalk at Greenpoint, Brooklyn, where we agreed to meet for breakfast, expecting him to roll up on a bike or behind the wheel of his Mitsubishi Delizia minivan. Instead, um, he appears silently on a mini skateboard with a big soft cruiser wheels as a blur of hair and limbs flying off the street. Um, the minivan thing is a big deal, isn't it? A lot of people have been doing that. I've seen a lot of videos online of, of YouTube, sorry, specifically, of younger kids kind of up in sticks, leaving their apartments behind, selling all their gear and just living in a van which is pretty cool i think especially if you're a creator or if you're a content creator or you're trying to um live a more fulfilling life the idea of kind of unshackling yourself from these kind of worldly possessions just kind of living off the land quote unquote or living in a van and wandering around is pretty amazing especially if you make all your living on the internet you don't really need anything but a good internet connection especially nowadays with good dongles or good coffee shops or co-working spaces you could pretty much get all your work done and just hang out and have a good time living in a van so i, I quite like this movement i think it's pretty cool to see younger people doing it too because it would have been a thing where you would have been back in the day if you would have seen somebody living in a van you would have thought they were a pedophile right nowadays kids are doing it and they're flipping you know they might as well be influencers right they are influencers for the most part and it continues um the scion of um legendary skate punk uh steve olsen alex is one of the a uh, few second generation professional skateboarders yeah true um he skates for nike and his own successful boarding company called 917 but these days he's just likely to see him surfing on long island or djing in a club on avenue c or maybe shopping for medicinal herbs at indian grocery store um austin's various interests or curiosities sorry, have led him down a quite different paths with and without his skateboard he runs a small but highly sought after fashion label called bianca chandon which is easily one of the better um skater owned fashion labels out there or streetwear brands in general which makes limited edition runs of graphic tees hoodies and sportswear but it's it's, it's way more than that they, he actually makes cut and sew like he's uh, bianca chandon is really really fucking good and i like the fact that it's always these small capsule collections like it's like a wardrobe and he drops it, it sells out, and he drops another one, and it sells out. It's really, really nice. Like, um, I still remember that board that he did for his dad, uh, the pro board, the kind of massive cruiser. That was fucking beautiful. Um, so, yeah, I'm a big fan of his brand. Um, and, again, I think that the fact that he's a curious individual, like, you know, look him in the minivan meditating, makes it more interesting. Like, that's what I think is the benefit of life. Like, going through life, and I can't imagine. That's what some people, when they say, oh, you're so when they give me all these weird compliments about the stuff that I do is interesting and cool, I don't really get it because th to me, life is like quite boring just doing the average, the everyday thing, nine to five, going to work, coming back, going on my phone, chilling, sleeping, going up again. That's boring. Why wouldn't I try and, I don't know, if you if you happen to like be watching a documentary about birds and you end up getting interested about a particular breed of bird, why not just like, instead of just stopping it there, why not just Google what that bird breed is read up on some books about it, watch another documentary on migration of that bird in a particular region, maybe find a podcast of somebody who follows birds, or I don't know, get go down that wormhole and discover something. That makes life more interesting than just what? Watching things on surface value, watch, watching things just a surface value brain and just kind of ending it there and kind of moving on. You have to. And I guess it's even more so for a professional skateboarder where you kind of effectively have the world at your hands. You have access to everything at a really young age. Probably, you know, um, not the most wise decision, right? You're hanging out with old... It's the, always the really interesting part of professional skateboarders, especially ones that are like... Um, especially ones that are like childhood prodigies, right? Or child child, child prodigies, yeah? Pro, prodigies, whatever that word is. You end up going on tour with grown men, right? Around the world, right? Which, which can definitely not be the most constructive way for a, a kid to grow up. Um, especially if they don't have like a younger crew 
kind of team, which nowadays is the in thing to kind of have kids um, skating together as a, in a big group. But back in the day, it was always about kind of getting brought in or kind of getting grandfathered in with a whole older group. So I can imagine the things that he's seen, he's probably been like, you know what? I'm all tapped out on that kind of hedonistic lifestyle. I'm going to go in this other way because you've done the other stuff, isn't it? There's only so much way you can go down, especially with the passing of his friends and stuff. And um, the un, uh, untimely death of like Dylan Ryder, who's a big, who's a close friend of his too. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see his, his evolution, man. It's really amazing to see it. Again, like just cool. I just find it cool that kids will look up to kids will see like the same way that I look at Jason Dill. Someone will see Alex Olsen that way too. I think that's really amazing. Um, it continues here. Um, he's an in, he's an in, instable dabbler, approaching every new project with an intensity and focus of a first year med student. He's been skateboarding since he was twelve, and now Olsen has come uh, ver, has become a voracious consumer of all things related to mindfulness and spiritual betterment. A self-taught guru in his quest to feel better and make the world a better place. Definitely, if you check out his Instagram, I used to when I used to be on Instagram a lot. Um, I check his stories. He's always posting some cool books and stuff. I think he he recommended a book that I actually picked up on audio book called um, "How to Change Your Mind." I think it's by some meditation guy as well or some kind of new age dude. I'm pretty sure I got it from um, uh, I got it from Alex Olson. I think it's an audio book. Let me see if I can get it here on my phone. I can definitely show you what the author's name is. You can maybe pick up yourself. Load up on here. Come on, iPhone. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Library. My phone's super slow right now. Where is it? Um, yeah, it's called. Uh, is it? No, I don't know if it's Michael Pollan. It's another one. It's another dude. I don't think it's how to change my Michael Pollan. It's another. There's another book anyway. Another book I remember he recommended. That's like a new agey one. It might be that anyway. How to Change Your Mind by Michael Pollan. It might be that. So definitely check that out if you're that way inclined. Anyway, regardless. But let's continue. Um. Da, 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 da. Uh, since he was 12 a self taught guru but he would uh, never put it in that way he's just curious he says and in deep world in this rabbit hole of a YouTube and Instagram you'd think that he would be that would be enough to keep Austin occupied these days and grounded in some kind of corporability or corporability whatever that word is but not so much I'm like a bag blowing in the wind he says a chiseled Jesus with an aggro edge. Today, he's wearing a vintage army jacket, faded jeans, and blue woven uh, leather shoes that resemble Mexican horaches. It's for New York, but he's got a Florida tan. Um, I picked the one easy place in neighborhood, he says, where I thought we'd be able to chat in peace, but I soon realized that I had made a crucial mistake. Olsen is vegan. Anyone who follows him on Instagram, where he obsessively reposts extremely crunchy natural food and medicine memes knows that. Nothing at this uh, bistro is made without butter, but Olsen perks up when the server tells us the place has oat milk, which is enough to hold us over until the form of, uh, hold us over in the form of a couple of Americanos. And he says here, whenever I post any of that stuff Olsen says on Instagram, it's more just for awareness. This may be true. This may be false. It's bringing attention. You can decide. You can decide about benefits of a copping, fasting, and colon cleansing. But Austin has made his decision. I want to try to squeeze out as much as whatever I can, as many as the skateboarding as I can. I just want to feel good, which is great. And it's also something I've kind of noticed, right? I remember when I was doing all my, because I stopped doing it. I had a very conflicted relationship with posting about my reading, my working out, my eating habits, my learning, my self-discovery, my evolution on Instagram, because I felt always felt as if I was like, kind of like showing off how big my dick was. I don't know. But it's a really strange feeling to have because if I go back to my if I go back through my archive of stuff that I was posting when I was in my hedonistic party promoter days, all of it was con all of it contained going out and getting fucked. All of it. It was all drugs, alcohol, going out at late at night. It's just that's all it was. There was nothing in that post that made it seem like I had like a balanced life, right? Um, but I felt pretty good about that, right? I didn't feel away. I didn't feel weird about posting those kind of things. I don't know why <gasps> nowadays I feel bad about posting a book I'm reading because I feel as if like I'm meant, I'm kind of intellectually masturbating myself. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but it's strange how people can have such a big opinion on like, imagine you post something about cupping and everyone's got something to say, but if you post a picture of a tray of shots, everyone's like, yeah, you go, man. It's like, that's weird. Anyway, um, and I like the fact that he wants to squeeze as much as he can out of life because, you know, we're all getting, we're the same age, mamma mia. Also, it's very free now, but he says a combination of events that occurred around the time he was 30 led him to uh, a few major lifestyle changes. He lost his grandmother and his close friend, Bamba, man, uh, fellow skater, Dylan Reader, um, in the same year. Seeing Dylan and going through cancer and stuff you do you just like okay we need to be healthy he says so Austin says Austin so he watched the documentaries Cowspiracy and What the Health he read Meat is for Pussies by Cromag to singer um, John Joseph I read that and I was like fuck I need to do this which is great right I think that same thing happened to like um, um what's that new documentary on Netflix um, Game Changers right my brother read that recently and he kind of decided to go vegan for a bit 
even if it doesn't last, the fact that he's got an awareness of this is awesome. I think sometimes picking at the science of it and getting all finicky and saying this can't happen, this can't happen is a bit, you know, not it's a bit um, it's a bit pointless. The whole point of these kind of videos and documentaries is to kind of open people's minds up to this kind of alternative way of living. So if the documentary is able to impact my brother, who's just like a regular dude, and kind of get him to kind of question his um, eating habits or his kind of lifestyle choices or the stuff that he does with his life, it's great in general, right? Um, that's all you can do in this kind of one op- opportunity we're given to live on this planet. Um, and again, great style here. I love his little minivan. Um, it's, he definitely, you can tell Austin loves, does, does a bit of grounding, and he definitely walks around New York with no, with no shoes on. Get it, getting one with the universe. Um, Olsen is the kind of person who isn't satisfied by conventional answers. I asked for our example. If he ever takes Advil or other over-the-counter medicine, and of course, fuck no, he says his cure for headache is to eat oh, 10 almonds, which is a bit new age, it's a little bit Gwyneth Paltrow, but again, if it works for him, no problem. He drinks only distilled tap water to which he adds his own minerals. It's crazy how much better it tastes, he says. Lately, he's been um, trying to get into the Ayurvedic diet, eating whole foods at set times according to doshas, different kinds of energy circulating in the body. So he's definitely gone full woo-woo, which I'm, I'm a fan of. I think if you're going to go full woo-woo, Go the whole hog. Do the whole thing. Because again, the hedonistic lifestyle, the party lifestyle, we know what that story is like, right? I've, we've all, what's my Keith Richards autobiography that I've read, right? Elton John's autobiography I just finished now. That um, hedonistic lifestyle, it only ends one way. And if you really want to have a long uh, longevity in your career, you want to grow old, you want to start a family, you want to pass down your wisdom, be a point of reference, or just be alive, you have to, there's a kind of point where you have to rein it in. You just have to. Yeah, there's no other way you can do it, right? Even even Ozzy Osbourne, the one guy that was kind of fighting the fight of the Caners, he's kind of succumbed now to pneumonia, or is it Parkinson's or something, right? Even even he has to kind of put it, knock it on the head a little bit. It has happens to all of us. You have to kind of, you have to decide. You don't have to do one or the other. You just have to make a decision. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Around the same time he was starting to tweak his diet, he says, Olsen hurt his ankle, battling a trip in Nike skate team. He tried physical therapy and personal trainers, but it didn't help. Like it was making much, it didn't feel like it was making much progress. So he signed up for a one month trial of the Womb Center on Bowery, which is that I think it's an app as well, right? Womb is lot is not like a typical neighborhood yoga spot, but it's a futuristic flavor for technology. According to its website, that includes a 3D sound baths and projective visual installation, which sounds amazing. It's very new agey. Olsen says, um, uh, "I was just like, all right, I'm going to immerse myself in this yoga and see what happens. And if I plan myself for a month, which is great, that's why I like to. This is why my plan as well. I like to do." One month experiment. Just give it a go. It's one month. One month goes by in the blink of an eye. And then by the end of it, you realize if it's for you or not for you. The fact that people are like, oh, I don't have time. I want to break it down. Because most plans you see, even workout plans, health plans, it's all like 10 minutes, five minutes. Why do they do that? Because they want to get you through the door. They know that if they tell you it's actually going to take you a year to get a body like, I don't know, you know, the guys from 300, you're not going to do it. But if they tell you to do 30 minute abs and you might get a six pack, it's going to just get you through the door. And the hope is once they get you through the door, doing crunches and eating well and running and stuff, you might hang around. That's the hope. But, you know, usually doesn't happen. Anyway, it continues here, very new agey. I was like, all right, I'm going to myself in this yoga, see what happens. If I apply myself for a month, after five days or a week for a month, also says his ankle felt strong and perhaps more importantly, his mind felt clear, which makes more sense. I guess if you're eating a, a carb-heavy diet, there is, this, like, there is a tendency of, of inflammation, which I'm sure if you're skateboarding and you twist your ankle, probably isn't the best option, probably isn't the best way to go around bad things. So the fact that he's changed his diet in some way, shape or forms and took a different path in terms of physical therapy might have definitely helped his ankle. I'm not I'm not against that whatsoever. I think that's definitely possible. I was going to continue here. Then one day a friend told him about Wim Hof, which is, you know, the guy, really. I think if you listen to this podcast, you know Wim Hof is. I think everyone knows who Wim Hof is at this point. Says Olsen, from those like me who didn't, Wim Hof, a.k.a. the Iceman, is a Dutch guy who hangs out while mostly nude in icebergs, plays guitar, runs marathon barefoot in the snow, and swims in frigid waters. Hof believes that you can train yourself to control your body through breathing in order to suppress pain, strengthen your immune system, and elevate your mood. Definitely agree with that one. Wim Hof, Wim Hof method, which I did, I did a couple years ago, actually. Or was it three years ago? I did a whole class the whole school so the whole class i downloaded it i think um yeah i'm pretty sure i did yeah i did it a couple of years ago yeah i'm pretty sure i did the whole meditation lying down sitting up breathe exercises yes yeah, super super good i really recommend you check it out the Wim, Wim Hof method combines breathing exercises with exposure to cold often in the form of icy showers it's all about controlling your heart rate with your breath and having them in sync Olson says it's so cold that you have nothing to focus on but one thing there's no other thought which I think is really the hardest thing in meditation. Completed two, he also completed two Wim Hof courses online, but skipped the final one. 
He said, like, go and walk in the snow in the mountains. I'm like, who the fuck has that? I mean, yeah, we have snow, but I don't have a fucking cold spring that I can jump into. Um, yeah, it looks really cool, man. I love this whole article. And so, yeah, I recommend check it out. I won't read the whole thing, but definitely check it out. Um, Alex Olsen on GQ. He looks he looks tight, man. He looks fucking fit as a fiddle, to be fair. No homo or yes homo. Um, I'm loving the beard. I'm loving the skateboard Jesus look here. So definitely check him out. Alex Olsen, one of my... Um, well, someone I look up to, I think, to be honest. Yeah, he's interested, definitely. Man, the way he's kind of segwaying into different sort of career paths, the fact that he kind of had a record label going for a while, putting out little EPs, uh, making edits on tracks that he's only... Yeah, I don't think he only dj for like a few years and he was really making fucking tracks, doing much more than I was doing, DJing, playing vinyl and stuff, uh, hanging out with DJ Harvey and um, uh, Dr. Dunks, what's his name? Dunks, I've got his name, the first, is it Dr. Dunks? I think so. Just being around all those cool people and just doing his damn thing. 917, uh, 917, the skateboard brand, which is a bit more for the kids, and then obviously Bianca Chandon, which is for the mandem. So yeah, definitely check out uh, uh, Alex August's interview on GQ. Again, I'll put in the show notes if you guys check out yourself, but a really good read and a really eye-opening look into, you know, what QSD can do, man, how it can help you kind of, you know, uh, explore other areas of your life. 